We've all been in situations where we've been hurt, where we may have overreacted because something said or something that was done touched a nerve. Have you found yourself dealing with inappropriate anger and emotions and wondered where did it come from? Well, hurt doesn't just go away. And the thing about holding on to it is that when you hold on to pain, when you hold on to hurt, it eventually hurts you. And so the problem is you have to place that hurt somewhere else. And one of the worst places that you can hold on to past hurt or past pain is in your mind or in your heart. Of all the things the Bible tells us to protect, to guard, I find it interesting that we're called to guard our hearts. And at first I struggled to understand this. What should we guard our heart from? Heartbreak? Love? Or pain? Is it the physical heart that pumps blood around the body? What exactly is this heart that the Bible mentions over a hundred times? But then I began to understand that a human being is made up of three parts. The spirit, soul, and body. Now this heart is found in the soul, which is the seat of emotions and affections. It's the center of the human personality, the will, the reasoning, the intellect, memory, and conscience. In fact, I want to describe it this way. The heart is an arena. It's the center of everything that a believer needs to guard. It's a battleground that we must guard. And when you think of it this way, you appreciate that not everything must be allowed to land on the ground of your heart. And the problem we face, the battle we face, is that God wants to land in the arena of our heart. But so does the devil. And so do you, with your own will and flesh. So in short, all of the gateways to your heart, your thought life, your emotions, will, and reasoning must be guarded so that only godly things are permitted. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Now the word of God is saying, guard those things that motivate and mold you. Control your thoughts, your emotions, your will, and your attitude because this becomes the sum total of who you are. It's important to guard the arena of your mind because Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Meaning that what you think is what you become. Your thought life controls you. Your thoughts, be it positive or negative, good or bad thoughts, they will affect your attitude, your behavior, and your attitude becomes your actions. There's a saying which goes like this. Sow a thought, reap a deed. Sow a deed, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a destiny. In other words, whatever I'm going to sow in my life as a child of God, it has to be good. I have to think about my thoughts before I do anything so that my actions will bring good, positive, godly behavior and conduct. As a child of God, we must control our thoughts to be in line with the Word of God. In 2 Corinthians 10, we're told to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ, meaning you have to do something to every thought if it's not pleasing to God. You have to be on guard because what you allow to enter your heart becomes part of you. Guard your heart. When it comes to guarding your heart, part of that process is to have your heart cleansed by the blood of Jesus. David had to cry to God in Psalms 51 verse 10 and say, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Renew a right spirit in me. David knew he needed to have a clean heart. 
And only God was capable of creating that clean heart which was free from contamination. He was asking God for a heart that was free from sin, from adultery, from unholiness. And we too as children of God need to pray for this clean heart every now and again. And the thing is, once God has cleansed your heart, then we have a responsibility to guard it. We must keep our hearts occupied with the things of the Lord. We must keep our hearts occupied with the things of the Lord. We must guard our hearts from negative emotions like worry and doubt, even people. Your heart is like a storage space and depending on what you have stored in there, that's what will come out of you. In Luke 6 verse 45 it says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks meaning if your heart is full of good things when you open your mouth good things will come out but if you don't guard your heart and it's full of evil things then that's what will come out of you. And as a believer, you have to pray so that your heart may be guarded. You have to pray concerning every aspect of your life. Prayer will give you inner peace and assurance. Prayer will settle your emotions and your mind, therefore guarding your heart. Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, lovely and of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Paul here gives us a summary of what a child of God needs to think about and ponder on. When it comes to what we meditate on, when it comes to what we concern ourselves with and what attention we give our thoughts to, we need to set parameters and borders in our thoughts. Due to my addiction, I... Life. As a child of God, let good things revolve in your mind. Let pure thoughts and pure habits develop in you. Guard your heart by having lovely and good deeds, good intentions and godly motives. A child of God has to dwell on these things which are of good report. And the word of God is an important tool to help you to guard your heart and mind. When you feed your mind on the word of God, you're filling yourself up with good and positive things from the Lord. Things which will reflect in who you are and in your character. Things that will be seen when the tests of life arise. Every believer must fight with every godly weapon that's available to them to keep their hearts pure and to keep their thoughts pure. And you can only fight with the word of God. For example, when you face something that you may not be excited to do, the Word of God tells us that do all things without murmuring and complaining, or rather, do everything without grumbling or arguing. In Isaiah 1 verse 17 it says, learn to do right, learn to do good. So we must start being mindful of what you let in your heart and in your mind from today. Fight to have positive thoughts. Pray for a godly character. Begin to confess the word of God. That's how you guard your heart and that's how you guard your mind with all diligence. Consider this for a moment. As a man thinks, so is he. What you think is what you become. You could even say that the quality of your thoughts determines the quality of your life. I used to always ask the question, 
So where does God come in when it comes to my thought life? But you see, we need to realize that our thoughts are invaded by what we see, what we hear, the people we spend time with, lusts, desires, ambitions, and emotions. But if you take a moment and think, just think, what are God's thoughts? What does God think towards me? In those moments when my own thoughts tell me that you can't do this, well, God's word says, yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. When I hear, that's impossible, or that'll never happen, I tell myself Luke 18.27, all things are possible with God. When you feel lost, feel alone and isolated, tell yourself Hebrews 13 verse 5, where God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. When you're overwhelmed with your problems, meditate on 1 Peter 5 7. Cast all your burdens on God, for He cares for you. When you find yourself thinking that your situation Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. When you start thinking thoughts like, I can't figure this life out. I don't know what my purpose is. Psalm 37.23 tells you that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So make a conscious decision to win the battle of your mind today. Don't let negative thoughts, negative words contaminate that which God thinks about you. The scripture tells us to guard our minds. It's a doorway. You determine what goes in and what stays. Something literally has to rise up in you. You have to realize that you are in Christ. You are well able and strong in Christ. You are a winner. You are the head and not the tail. You are more than a conqueror. So from today, speak with boldness. Pray with authority. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things make your request be made known to God. Abundance, victory, faith. These should be the affirmations of your life. If your thinking is limited, your life will be limited. If you're going to reach your highest potential, you have to, you simply must hold on to what God says about you, not man. So let me ask you this. What is playing over and over in your mind? What is feeding your self-esteem? What is impacting your confidence? What are you dwelling on? Those thoughts, are you paying attention to them? What they say is impacting you. Change your mind. Renew your mind. Get your mind right. There is nothing more powerful.